Hello, good morning. This is Dr. Maria Narlin Yosores, and I would like to share with you my expertise in dressmaking. And I know this is a new uh, strategy in sharing, but I just like to uh, leave something behind later. And remember, this is a live coverage, so please bear with me for all the shortcomings or technical problems later. And anyway, before we start, let us have first a short prayer. Lord God, thank you very much for this wonderful day. Thank you very much for the opportunity of reaching this far to share my expertise to all my students, my friends in the FB, my sisters in the ME community, reaching them and sharing what I have, your God-given gift to me. I hope that with this short lecture, I can make a difference in their life. Thank you, Lord, for all the people behind this learning, my teachers in the elementary, high school, and even college. Thank you very much for my money who inspired me to become a good dressmaker and to become a good teacher. Thank you for all the students, for all the people you have sent to listen to me. Please allow me to impart to them all these learnings. And these are given to you for your glory. Because you are our strength, you are our support, and all these things are for your glory, Lord. Thank you very much. In the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Okay, so before we start with my lecture on clothing, I would like to just give you a brief um, intro about myself. I've been teaching in the University, Technological University of the Philippines for 38 years and 30 years or more under the College of Industrial Education, Home Economics Department, and I am blessed to have now teachers too who have been under my tutelage and I hope they've been good teachers also like me. Anyway, I would like also to thank my teachers in the elementary, Dr. Bisis, um, um, Deborah Pilinio, Mrs. Evang Evelina Badana, my edgy teachers, which inspired me to go on and learn dressmaking. And in the high school, Mrs. Delica Estalilla and Ms. Josefa Chason. For four years, I have under their tutelage. That's why I guess I developed the skills in dressmaking. And in college, and in, uh, at that Lady Institute of Technology then in high school, now Eastern Desires University, and now I'm in PUP. Uh, I was under Professor um, Mercedes L. Reyes and Mrs. Aurora Paule and Miss Alma Bayaras then. So I owe them what I learned now. I owe it to them what I know now. And of course, my inspiration, all my students who are under me. And I hope today, seeing you guys and seeing me, I am blessed. Okay? Okay. Now, why did I start with reading the tape measure and saying it the professional way? Because most of my students, when we tackle on taking one half measurement or one foot measurements, I see them folding their tape measure. Future teachers should not fold your tape measures in teaching your students. So, how do I do it? All right. But before that, I would like to tell you that tape measures come in different um, forms. We have this one I have here, the very, very long tape measure I have, which I use in measuring the width of wide curtains and also in measuring the length of the curtains so this is uh, seven seven yards seven seven eight yards okay, and here the common tape measure that dressmakers use we have until 60 inches 
And also this one goes handy because I can always put this in my bag or in my wallet here. And we just press here and press. I hope always I always bring this with me so that anybody who wants to or ask me to get their measurements, I have this in my bag. Okay? And of course, I would like also to show you the different tools and equipments that a dressmaker should use. We have the L square. I find this very handy and uh, useful because all my measurements are perfect because this is a tailored L square. And of course, my favorite ruler. I uh, I wanted to use the wooden one. And then of course the French curve and the hip curve. French curve for the armhole for the necklines. French curve for your hips. Um, taking the hip figure when you make the skirt. Okay. Now, do you have your tape measures on hand? You should always have, when I teach you how to read the tape measure, please be sure that you have the tape measure in your hand. That was one of my assignment to you. Bring your tape measure, okay? All right, your tape measure has two phase. We have the inches. Oh, I'm perspiring, it's very hot. We have the inches and we have the centimeters. In my course of lecture, please bear with me because I am using the inches, which I find it more comfortable and easy to use. Okay? Now, for those who are into centimeters, I guess you just find your way how to use the centimeters. But for the meantime, in my series of lectures, I will be using the inches. Okay? Can you hear me? Just say hi, hello. Uh, questions will be entertained later, okay? Now, in your tape measure, we have there one inch, two inches, three inches, four inches. All right. Be sure that all these lines in the one inch here in the board, look at the board. I have drawn here all the, the fractions of one inch. Okay? This is very important that you have to remember this on mind because these are the lines that should be seen when you look for the one half of a measure or one fourth of a measure. Okay, we start with one half measurement. What are the different parts of the body measurements that needs to get the one half measurement? All right, if you still remember, we have one half of the across shoulder, one half of the across back one half of the bus distance. What else? One half of the armhole or the arm side. I hope you remember all these terms. One half of the girth, one half of the thigh, one half of the knee, one half of the bottom. Okay, so we focus first on the one half. Now, how do you read or how do you take one half using the tape measure without folding them? Okay. Your tape measure has one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Try to multiply these numbers by two. So you will get example six times two is 12. What is one half of 12? So it's six. 14, so seven times two is 14. So how one half 14 is seven. Now these are easy when it is a whole number, but how about if it is seven and one fourth, or eight and one half, or ten and three fourths, my God, you will remember your mathematics, right? So it's easy. Okay. For example, you need uh, for one half measurement. Okay, one half of a measure of of thirteen. Okay. Which number? when multiplied by 2 is nearest to 13. 6 times 2 is 12. Now where is the 13? Okay. So, if this is your 1 half, okay, all 1 half should contain 
the complete fractions of a 1 inch. That's why it's very important for you to remember and register in your mind the different parts under each inches. Okay? So, if you are looking for 13, so this is 6, this is 7. This is your tape measure, right? Okay. So, this one has 1 inch. So, this one is again 1 inch. So, this will be 12, 13, and this is 14. So, when you go back to reading your tape measure, you will read as 6 and 1 half. Because this is your 13. Malinaw po. Okay, malabo. One more. Alright. So, again, 1 half of uh, 15. Okay. Which number in your tape measure? That's why you are, it is important for you to hold a tape measure. Okay? So, which number in your tape measure when multiplied by 2 will be near to 15? So, that is 7 times 2 equals 14. And the 1 half near to that, that will be 15. And your 8 times 2 is 16. So, when you go back to reading the actual, 7 and 1 half is your 15. This will be 7 and 1 half, and this is 6 and 1 half. Madali? Mahirap? Umpisa lang yan. Okay. Again, if you need 19, okay. So, which number in your tape measure when multiplied by 2 is nearest to 19? Okay. So, 9 times 2 is 18. So, your 1 half now is 20, 9, 18, 19. And then your 10 times 2 is 20. Right? So, 18, 19, that will be 9 and 1 half. Yes? Okay. Oh, Magdala na. O, isa pa. 1 half of 19 and 3 fourths. Bonga. 19 and 3 fourths. Okay. So, if 9 times 2 is 18, and then the next one is 19, so you will get your 3 fourths in between the 9 and 1 half and 10 inches. Right? So it's important for you to master the placement of 1A, well, placement of 1A, 1 fourth, 1 half, 3 fourths, 1 inch. That is very important for you to master that because even the one half of one half, nine and one half to ten, those parts should be seen into your mind so you know where nine and three fourth is. So nine and three fourth, okay, I close, close, close. Nine and one half, nine and three fourth. So this is your one half, this is your one fourth, one, two, three, or oh, this is nine and seven eighths. So upon upon finding the nine and three fourths. This will now be read as 9 and 7 eighths. Okay? So, you have to master the position of each fractions here of your inches. Because if not, you will go back to folding your tape measure. As teachers, you should show your students how to use the tape measure properly. Okay? So again, one more time. Uh, we need one half of 20 and 5 eighths. Okay. 20 and 5 eighths. Alright. What number when multiplied by 2 is nearest to 20? So, 10 times 2 equals 20. Okay. So, you find 20 now. But you are asked 20 and 5 eighths. Okay. So, 20... 21, 22, because 11 times 2 is 22. So between 10 and 10 and 1 half, that is 20, how will you locate 5 eighths then? So if you know the position of 1 half and the position of 5 eighths, it will be easy, easy for you to find 10 and uh, 2 5 eighths. Uh, but since 5 eighths is just a minimal number, you can go to 10 and 3 eighths. Okay? If it's a minimal number, 
go to the higher. Tawag sa lower. Kasi pag sa lower, bari sumikip. Hindi baling lumuwag ang damit, wag lang sumikip. Diba mga anak? I keep on telling you that. O, so, that will be read as 10 and 3 eggs. Okay. 10 and 3 eggs. Any question? Magulo? Hindi. Kayo ang magulo. Okay. Again, let's say one half of 11. Alright, 11. So what number is again multiply, when multiplied by 2 in the tape measure is nearest to 11? So 5 times 2 is 10. Alright? And then all the one half will be, plus, uh, will be added as 1 inch or will be uh, you will use one half as your one inch. So, five times two is ten. The next half is eleven. The next half is twelve. Okay? Alright. So, you will read your eleven as five and one half. Alright. Five and one half. Malinaw na po. Oh, isa pa. Para bago tayo lumipat sa one-fourth, kasi mas maliit ang one-fourth sa one-half, dito muna tayo sa one-half, malaki-laki yung tingnan. Alright, next. You have, but I don't know, let us say, 21 and three-fourths. Ayan, ako, may three-fourths na. Right. So, what number in your tape measure when multiplied by two is nearest to 21? So, you have there... 10 times 2 is 20. The next half is 21. And then 11 is 22. But you are asked to get 21 and 3 fourths. So if this is 21 and this is 22, where is the 3 fourths between 21 and 22? So 3 fourths will be 1, 2, 3. So it will be read as 10 and 7 eighths. Okay. 10 and 7 eighths. Malinaw na po? Okay. Sige, keep on practicing. Ganun talaga. Practice makes you better. Not perfect. Because you always commit mistakes. Alright. Practice makes you better. Alright. So, we are done with one half. Now, we go to one-fourth of the measure. So, what part of our body measurements, when we do our patterns, that we need one-fourth of the measure? We have the bust measure. We only take one fourth of that when we drop the basic pattern. We have the waist measure. We have the hips measure. Okay. Those are the basic um, measurements that needs one fourth of the measure. The bust measure, the waist measure, and the hips measure. Okay. So, let us say our Measurement is 24. Okay, the waist is 24. So what is one fourth of the of 24? What number when multiplied by 4 will give you nearest to 24? So sabi ninyo ayaw yun ng mathematics, but we have to apply math. Of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division in our pattern making. So bear with us and bear with your math teacher. Basic lang naman ang apat na phrases na yun. So, what number when mu multiplied by 4 will give you 24? Alright. So, 6 times 4 is 24. So, one fourth of your trend of your waist 24 is 6. Very good. Okay. How about 32? One fourth of 32. Okay. So, 32. What number when multiplied by 4 will give you number near to 32? 8 times 4 is 32. So, one fourth of your waistline is 8. Okay. Ano yan? Okay. Okay, uh, next. Again. Okay, white marker. <laughs> Alright, for example, 32, right? 
So, 1 fourth is 8. Now, how about if the measurement is 32 and 1 fourth? Yan. So, 32 and 1 fourth. Okay. So, can you hear me? Just say say hi if you don't hear me. Alam nyo naman, live tayo ngayon. Okay. So, 32 and 1 fourth. Okay. So, number nearest when multiplied by 4 is 8. So, 32. All you have to do is all the 1 fourth in your tape measure should be read as 1 inch. So, 32. The so yung isang 1 fourth ay 33. The next 1 fourth is 34. The next 1 fourth is 35. And the next 1 fourth is 36. So, when you multiply 9 times 4 equals 36. So, ang galing natin sa math. Okay. So, 32 and 1 fourth will be read as... Now, as I have told you earlier, be sure to master the fractions in 1 inch because you will have to consider them in your 1 fourth. Okay. So, 8 and... This is 1 half. So, that will be 8 and 1 sixteen. Tama? Kasi yung sunod sa kanya, 1 8 na eh. So, 8 and 1 sixteen. Now, as I have said... Go to the nearest higher fraction. So you will read this as 8 and 1 8. Okay? So 1 fourth of your 32 and 1 fourth is 8 and 1 8. Now, sasabihin nyo, ay 1 8 na lang naman. Remember that 1 8 will be multiplied by 4. So this will affect the measurement of your pattern or of your dress. So it is important to get the higher number than the lower number, right? Or the lower, the higher fraction than the lower fraction. Okay? So, 32 and 1 fourth, it is 8 and 1 eighth. Okay? Again, how about if the measurement is 35 and 1 half? Okay. So, what is 1 fourth of 35 and 1 half? Again, what is the number nearest when multiplied by 4. So you have there 8 again. 8 times 4 is 32. So the next one fourth is 33, 32. Okay, 32, 33, 34, 35. So this is 35. But you need one half. So the, the 36, you have there 36. So this one half, you got it here. So you will now read this, read this as 8 and 7 eighths. Okay? So this is 8 and 7 eighths. Mahirap. Madali. Okay. One more. One fourth of 39. Now, why do I get bigger numbers? Remember, as I told you, bust measurement, waist measurement, and the hips measurement. So these are the biggest part of the body that when you make your pattern, you need one-fourth of it, okay? So what is one-fourth of 39? The nearest number is 9 times 4 is 36, right? So 36, again. So 36, 37, 38, 39. So you will read your tape measure as 9, and three fourths. Correct? Nine and three fourths. Okay. Mahirap. Practice, practice lang po. Again. Oh, measurement. Uh, hip line is 41. Okay. 41. One fourth of 41. What number again is nearest when multiplied by four? Ten. So ten times four is 14. Okay. So if this is 40, the next one fourth is 41. So your measurement will be 10 and 1 fourth. Okay? 10 and 1 fourth. Okay lang. Sige nga. Oh, gawin niyo ito. Okay, get, I told you to get your notebook, your, your uh, pen and notepad. Oh, gawin niyo. Try measuring the following and get one half. One half first. We go back to one half. Okay, 8 and 1 half, 11, 
10 and 1 fourth. 12 and 3 fourths. Okay, so one half yan ha. Alright. Now, so one fourth naman, you get the one fourth of the following measurements. 33. 36. 46. 27 and a half. Sige nga. Later, you show me your answers. Okay? Oh. Yeah. So you just have to use your tape measure. Now, if you will learn computing or reading the tape measure that way, you will not be folding your tape measure anymore. And your students will see you how you use your tape measure professionally. Okay? okay. Let's have a five minutes break first. So you have to answer my um, the figures I have given you. So I would like to thank my teachers, Mrs. Although some of them are now in heaven, but I owe it to them and I will always remember them as long as I am alive. Because of them, I am uh, actually I have I have these skills help me make both ends meet in the earlier times. So, there's no reason for you to say that you can do anything, that it's difficult to have, that you don't have a job, Just because this is already a job, if you will be trying to develop your skills. All of us have that skills to solve. It's just a matter of giving it a time and uh, interest, of course. I'm sorry, because I'm late. <laughs> okay na yung mga store, mga late, it's alright. Okay. Ano, okay na? So, kung okay na, anong sagot? Yung nga, ang sagot natin sa 8, sa eight and 1 half ay 8 and 1 half. 1 half of 8 and 1 half is 4 and 1 fourth. Correct ba kayo? Yung nga, kung correct kayo. Sabi ko, mag-break. Pero ayoko na mag-break. Okay. How about eleven? Ano yung Okay. Okay, so four and a half ang one half of eight and a half. How about eleven? Okay, five and one half. Five and one half. How about ten and three fourths? 10 and 3 fourths. It's 5 and 3 eighths. 5 and 3 eighths. Hindi yeah, kung tama ha. Walang daya-daya. Baka tinutupi-tupi nyo na naman yan. Alright. Then 12 and 1. 12 and 3 fourths. 12, 13. Okay. 6 and 3 eighths. Okay. Sige nga kung tama yung mga sagot ninyo. Ha? Di ba ang dali-dali lang naman? Kasi naalala ko mga estudyante ko noon, imbis magbabasa, dinadaya ako. Kala nila hindi ko alam. Diba, mga children? O, oh, alam naman ninyo yung nanay ninyo. Okay. Correct? Okay, let's go to one-fourth. What is one-fourth of 33? Number nearest to 33 is 8. 32, 33. So, 8 and one-fourth. How about 36? 9 times 4 is 36. So the measurement of 1 fourth is, of 36 is 9. How about 45? 10 times 4 is 40. 41, 42, 43, 44. Ay, 11 ba lang ni rest times 4, 44? 44, 45. So you will read it as 11 and 1 fourth. Okay? 11 and 1 fourth. How about 27 and 1 half? So 
27. Nearest is 6, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 1 half because next is 28. So 1 half of 27 and 28, all right? 6 and 7 eighths. 6 and 7 eighths. Ang sikreto po, when you are asked to get one half of a measure, you will count all one half in your tape measure as one inch. Okay? Now, if you are asked to get one fourth of a measure, all one fourth in your tape measure will be counted as, or will be read as one inch. Okay? So, kung six times four is twenty-four, seven times four is twenty-eight, so ang pagitan niya dyan ay twenty-four, 25, 26, 27, and then 28. So, all one-fourth will be read as one inch. Okay ba? Magaling na kayo magbasa ng tape measure? Practice, practice lang pag may time. Ha, mga anak is, o oh, yung mga nasa iba ni Banlugang, alam ko hindi na kayo nananahi, this is the right time for you to start doing your sewing. Kahit pala yung pagdamit-damit ninyo, no? mga shorts, mga blouse, or sometimes, by doing so, it might give you an opportunity to make ready-to-wear your house dresses. Kahit di ba yung first project nyo sa akin, uh, sleeping garment, blouse and shorts. And also, I would like also to uh, shout out to one of my students, Julie Sis, maybe to win. Uh, Salinas siya ng dalaga. She was my student in the arts and craft and dressmaking. Aba ay bongga, naging supplier sa SM because of all the learnings in the arts and craft. Alala niyo yung paggawa ng cover ng, ng rice cooker, ng blender. Aba ay naging negosyo niya yun. And she never forgets to say thank you ma'am because of you. Di ba? Ang sarap sarap sa pakiramba. Thank you very much. At least I have done something in your life. Meron ba mga anak? Okay. So, are we now ready to move on to the L square? Okay. Please remember your tape measure pala, no? As much as possible, if you are using it always and often, as much as possible, try to change it three times a month. Because tape measure also stretches. Lalo kung lagi mo sinungo sa ginagamit pagsukat. So, you have to change it every three months, no? And please be careful with your tape measure. Remember, this is your tool in taking the accurate measurement of your client. At as much as possible also, do not use tape measures na wala ng dulo. No? Ang mura lang naman tape measure mga anda, lalo yung mga naging teacher na ngayon, mura lang tape measure, buy. Okay? Then, and do not use your tape measure as a string to tie anywhere. Lalo na, bagula kayo pantali, di lang gamit yung pantali ng tape measure because it will, you will deform your tape measure. Okay? So, be sure that your tape measure is not uh, elastic no? or it, it does not stretch because it will affect the measurement of your body. A perfect dress comes from a perfect tape measure and of course, a perfect or correct measurement. Okay? Uh, do you hear me? Am I, am I clear? Uh, do you hear me loud enough? No? Okay. Alam naman ninyo, ang, ang mga pista pag live talagang ganyan talaga. Okay? Alright. Okay, next. Are we done with the tape measure? Okay, practice, practice lang, no? Anyway, you can send me comments or don't hesitate to. Pwede tayo maging mag-chat-chat. Okay? Alright. Wala na naman ako magagawa kung nagbukas na ako ng cellphone at lahat kayo nagtatanong. Anyway, that's my role in this world. To share. Okay, next we go to the L square. Alright. This is your L square. Huh? There are different types of L square. There are folding L squares, there are wooden L squares, and this one is a steel L, L square. Okay. Your L square also have inches on the other side. It has also two faces. No? Inches on the other side and different fractions on the other side. Now, when I started learning my dressmaking, I usually do not use an L square. No? But when um, Mrs. Paule, my Professor Paule, or Dr. Paule now, was my teacher in dressmaking at PUP, she taught us how to use the L square. And I find it very helpful because all my basic patterns are perfect. No? 
because I, I, I started using this because of this fraction at the back. Okay. Before, there, there were points given, a standard measurement from A to B, A to like this. But there are cases that people have different body build. Paano mo naman gagamitin ang standard measurement kung ang pinaman na kliyente ay mataba? No? Excuse me, sama kasi mataba ko. But let's face it that there are bodies that are really big and cannot be applied. The, we cannot apply the use of standard measurement from A to B is 5 inches. And so, using the L square, I find my patterns more, I may say, perfect in the measurement. It only happens to be imperfect if I got the wrong body measurement or I was not able to write down the correct measurement. Anyway, so you have here the inches and you have here the fractions. Now, if those who are who are going to buy an L square, to check if the L square is a perfect L, put this edge on the edge of the table. Huh? Pag ito'y dumiretsyo dun sa vertical at dumiretsyo to sa horizontal, that is a perfect L-square. You can use this in drafting the basic pattern, the skirt, the pants, especially the pants, and to take the crutch. No? Alam naman ninyo sa pagtalon, kinukuha dito sumasakay para kunin ang crutch. Huh? Okay. So, your L-square, ah, when do we use the L-square? If you remember, in our pattern drafting, there is one-third of the bust measure, okay? You get one-third of the bust measure. Now, what is the formula of getting the one-fourth? Formula of... Wait, but I'm a risk. Actually, I've been I've been planning this a long time ago, but wala kasi akong mga technical men ngayon lang. And thank you to my son, Christian. You know him, right? Okay. Um, formula for getting the um, measurement of the armhole depth, no, the depth of the armhole is one third of bust measure. Bust measure. Pagulo pa rin si Ma'am magsulat, ano, ang blackboard, ano, nung pa yan, ganyan na talaga. Okay. Alright. I do miss. Okay. 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 Yeah. One third of bust measure. The formula is bust divided by 2 equals x. Ito ang hahanapin yung under one third of the L square. Square, okay? Sa other side of the L square, 9. Pinatungo ko na siya. The other side, the L square are, you have here, uh, 112, yan, 112, 1 6, 1 third, and you have here, 1, uh, 2 thirds, okay? And then on the long arm, you have 1 16, 1 8, 1 4, and 1 half, okay? So, this is your L square, the long arm, and the short arm. The low arm on the vertical and the short arm on the horizontal. Huh? Ito ang mga fractions na ginagamit ng mga tailors. Kaya makita mo mga tailors talagang gumagamit ng S-square. Okay? Kaya nga tailored suit, tailored dresses, tailored cap. Okay? And this one is the inches when we use inches. Okay? Now, for example, our bust is 39. Okay, bust is 39. Divided by 2, ilan? Ayan. Again, one half of 39. Take measure. 36, 37. Take measure. Okay. So, 39. 
So that is 9 and 3 fourths, right? Ay, hindi pala, 1 fourth pala yun, sorry. Wala pala hinihingi ko. 1 <laughs> half of 39. O, ano ka lahat eh? 38. 19. Tama? Times 2. 38, 39. So, 19 and 1 half. Okay? So, locate 19 and 1 half. Locate 19 and 1 half under 1 third of your tape L square. So, ang 1 third ay nasa long arm. So, you have here 17, 18, 19, 20. Eh, 19 and 1 half. So, dito ka sa pagitan ng 19 and 20. Alright? Yan. So, dito mo kukunin ang So, 18, 19 and 1 na pagitan ng 19 and 20. Yan. Yan ang iyong one third of the bust measure. Ang sukat po niyan from here no? from, masyado akong nakadikit from here hanggang doon sa between ng 19 and 20. Because that is your one-third of the uh, bust measure. Then, in our pattern, in our procedure, after locating 19 and one-half, being as one-third, that's the time you add your one and one-fourth measure. So, para po yun, pag nagpapatay, mapapasin, bakit may one and one-fourth pa, ma'am? Para yung lalim dito, hanggang dito sa kilikili, ay hindi nasasakal ang kilikili natin. That's why we add one and one-fourth para lumuwag ng konti. No? Kasi minsan, pag hindi ka nagdadagdag ng 1 and 1 fourth, pag naglagay ka ng manggas, nasasa ka lang yung kilikilos. No? So, mag ka, we only, uh, if it is a sleeveless dress, we only add mga 1 half. Yan, para naman, hindi man wang-wang na wang-wang yung mga kilikilos. No? But for basic pattern, we always add 1 and 1 fourth in the next procedure. Next chapter na po yan ating lesson. Okay? So, your L square is used to get one third of the bust measure. So, for example, the bust measure is 39. You divide it by 2, 19 and 1 half, ang kahanapin mo sa L square. Okay? For example, again, bust is 45. So, divided by 2 equals 44. Ano ba? One half of 44. 22. So, 22 and 1 half. So, 22 and 1 half. So, hahanapin mo sa L square ang 22 and 1 half under 1 third fraction. Ha? Remember, sa long arm, ang 1 16 fraction, ang 1 6 fraction, saka 1 third fraction. So, under 1 third fraction, hahanapin mo ang 22. So, andito ang 22, katabi ng 23, ay kalahati lang. So, it's between 22 and 23. So, when you draft your pattern using this one, from here ang sukat hanggang dun sa 22 and 1 half. Okay ba, girls? Okay ba, mga... Boys and boys. Oh, okay, girls and boys. Hello, mga boys. Hello. Hi, mga teacher sa TUP. Hi, mga Wala lang akong magawa. Eh, kaysa naman, machugi ako na wala akong maiwan. So, I have to do this. Okay, guys? Okay, thank you for watching. Alright. May natutunan ba kayo? Eh, kung wala, titigilan na natin to. Okay. Malinaw po, malinaw. Alright. So, yan lang po ang gamit ng L square. Now, when you get the crutch measure, no, Hindi ka, ang iba kasi, pag walang L-square, pinapaupo ang kliyente. Then we get the crutch measure from the waist down to the base of the chair. Pero ang chair, dapat flat, hindi yung lumulubog. Huh? Kung wala kang L-square, you can get the crutch measure by allowing your clients or your model to sit down on a flat chair and then from the waist down to the uh, base of the chair. Then sa pinaka-bed ng chair. Yan ang pinaka-crutch measure. But if you have the L-square, sasakay lang po rito yung inyong kliyente. Pero huwag yun makapaking pataas. Ano, medyo ano lang, yung, yung hanggang doon na sa crutch yung pantalon. That's why, when taking crutch measurement, you suggest to your client that they should be in their pants. No? Kasi mahirap kumuha pag naka-skirt.
to have them in shorts or in pants. Okay? So, maliwanag na tayo. Okay na tayo. Kasi maya-maya, break tayo muna ng mga 5 minutes lang, ha? Inubla kong tubig. Then we continue with taking the body measurements. But before that, of course, we discuss first what are the different measurements that is needed uh, or to be taken. Uh, so we start with the cross shoulder, across back, we have the back figure, front figure, we have the bust height, bust distance, we have the waist, chest, what else? Uh, we have the hips, the skirt limb, we have the armhole, the girth, the sleeve limb. For the pants, we have the thigh, we have the knee, then we have the bottom. Okay? So, mamaya, ipapakita ko po ang tamang pagkuha ng sukat. Okay? I will be using my old uh, bust form, and then I will be asking my uh, sewer for demonstration. Huwag lang daw makita yung mukha niya, nahihiya raw siya. Okay, so later, after 5 minutes, we'll take a break, and then we continue with taking the body measurement. So we'll end up to body measurements, and then I will ask you to get at least 5 people you practice taking the body measurement, you write them down because on the next uh, lecture, I will be teaching you how to draft the basic pattern for the front, for the back, for the sleeve, and for the skirt. And of course, later part yung sa pants because I know some of you would like to know how to draft the pants pattern. So we will have first all the, the pattern uh, drafting. And then later, I will be teaching you how to transfer the darts into different positions. Kasi diba, ang darts, meron tayong neck dart, armhole dart, armhole waist knife. Eh, alam na lang mga sudyante mo yan, paikot-ikot ang papel, meron pang tinatawag na pivot method, meron pang tinatawag na slash and spread method. Uh, Malalurky kayo, maraming magandang pwedeng gawin sa panahe. And then of course, the skirt, different types of skirt. Series of lectures po ito, habang sinisipag si Mangyo Sorens. Na? Okay. So, sa aking assistant? Ah, hindi na pala ako pinababa. Huwag na rin ako mag-break. Kukuha na lang ako na ito. <laughs> anyway, I am glad that uh, I am I am very, I'm reaching my students far and wide. I hope you're enjoying. I hope you are being uh, reviewed or freshening your skills in sewing. Water. Water, water. Pasensya na kayo dahil talaga ako madaldal na teacher. Mulat sa pulpo talaga yan. Pag ako nagturo madaldal. My students know that. Kaya minsan ayaw nila sa akin po mag-attend eh. Kasi dami ko pinagagawa. Eh, ganun talaga. Diba? And I miss teaching this uh, subject mula no kayo mapunta sa College of Liberal Arts. Teaching management. Parang kakalungkot. Pero siguro it's God's will to find other environment. At saka para lalong niyang gisingin na aking interest in sewing. And I'm glad I have I am given the opportunity to reach you. So far and wide. At saka bongga, international ang aking mga audiences. Thank you very much for watching. Okay? Yes. Basa mo na yung ako. Nalitin ako nga. Yung mga, mga comments ka man sa inyo. Sige. Habang ginagawa niyo yung pinapagago. Natatanong ko may raffle daw. <laughs> Ver Carlos, may raffle ba? Pag nakapanahi ka na Ver, may raffle. Di sige, siguro din natin yan. Hi Karina, naku, ang dami-dami na pa. Imagine mo, for 38 years that I've been teaching in PUP, ilang taon na ba yung mga sudyante ko? Lola na nga ako eh. May mayor ako na rin ako sa tuhod. Diba? Uh, by the way, if you're asking kung saan ang aking classroom, Nasa terrace lang po ako kasi ito pinakamaliwanag at pinakamasayong lugar, no? Dito yung ating mga, mga tanim, eh? Okay. Hi, Sister Mara! Buti nakapanood ka. <laughs> Ma'am Risa, hindi po, ano yon whiteboard. Matagal lang kasi nakasulat, eh. Actually, isang buwan ko na itong plano. Ewan ko ba, bakit parang natatakot ako baka walang audience. Anyway, I know naman, pagdating sa dressmaking, 
And I hope that what I am sharing to you today, you will be able to use them in your respective classes. No? And please be kind to your students because one of the most difficult area in home economics is clothing. So you have to make your clothing class interactive, um, medyo masa masaya, ganun yung masaya ang pagpananahin. Kasi naging problema ko when I was in Abada High School, maganda lang ang subject ng clothing sa first first few months. Pagdating na ng end of the month, wala naman estudyante. Ayaw na magtastas, ayaw nung nito, at ang hirap-hirap ng operation. But we have to understand, sa Division of City Schools kasi, meron sila talaga sinusundan na procedure because there are contests. Kaya ako kasi, I am teaching what I have been doing for many years. Kung ano yung pinakamadali, yun ang binibigay ko. Hindi na, hindi na ako minsan sumusunod sa protocol ng tamang pagkakabit ng collar, tamang pagkakabit na nasa libro. Because what I am sharing are the experiences that I have uh, learned along the way no ako'y nananahe. And I have made this as my profession also, aside from teaching. Ang laki kaya nang kinikita pag marunong ka manahe. Kaya magsipag kayo manahe. Huh? So what I will be teaching you are the experiences that I have had for the past, hindi lang 38 years na pagtuturo. Because in high school, I've been sewing already. Kaya nga si Ma'am Pauli, galit na galit sa akin kasi nagtuturo pala ng bagong lesson, tapos na ako. Eh, four years ba naman ang floating ko in high school. So, I gained the uh, expertise or the, the skills. Okay? Oh, pwede na tayo. Thank you for watching and I hope I have done something good for you today because we will now continue with body measurements. Okay na? Okay na tayo? Okay. Pasensya na, hindi makakapag-CR. Anyway, pwede masiguro itong ma-review-review. Alright. Now, erase, erase. May patapik-tapik pa kung nilagay-lagay. Kasi talaga, ito ay sinulat ko ng ilang linggo na kasi ito nakadisplay rito. Kasi ang sabi, when you teach, your black whiteboard should be or your blackboard should be free from writing. So, we have to erase first what's on the board. Ang alcohol ay hindi na pang disinfectant din, kundi panlinis ng whiteboard. Okay. Ayan. Ha? Okay, erase pa ko ng blackboard. Okay. Um, yung ibang notes, ipo-focus ko yung camera sa mga notes, ha? Hindi ko ipo-focus sa mukha ko. Okay. Thank you sa aking mga technical staff. Thank you sa mga bumabasa na aking mga comments. Alright. O, oh, nagawa niyo ba yung mga measurements na hihingi ko? Correct ba? Picturean niyo ha, send sa messenger ko. Magbibigay ako ng quiz ko yun, quiz. Picturean kung tamang sagot at ilagay sa messenger ko. Okay. Yan. We will now have the body measurements. Okay. Ayan. Kita? Okay. I made an objective, of course. Kasi baka kailanganin ninyo, pakadagdag man lang sa inyong objective. Alright? So, number one is for you to memorize the body measurements. And then, to classify the different measurements according to vertical and horizontal way of taking the body measurements. So that, um, this is very important so that when you take the body measurements, you don't keep on up and down, up and down, left and right. So you take all the measurements that is needed for vertical measurements and take all the measurements for the horizontal measurements. Okay. And then use the different body measurements to get the actual measure of a client. Remember, a perfect dress will only be perfect when you were able to get a perfect measurement. But Never make a mistake in doing magic in your measurement. 
because there are clients who wants their measure their figure to be sexy we only made dresses we're not magicians remember that so whatever the measurement take it as it is because if she wants it to be tighter and then you finish the dress and it's tight you will have the problem of again uh, fixing the dress so whatever the measurement is yun lang wag mo nang kontrahin no? because we only make dresses and we will only make them beautiful by the dress but the face is the most beautiful part of the person dagdag lang po yung damit so we will just try to make a perfect dress to them okay? but not to magic na maging sexy sila okay next Okay. Yeah. Body measurements, ayan, no? But uh, when you take body measurements, it should not be too tight or too loose. Okay? Perfect, perfect fit of a garment is the outcome of dressmaker's technique in taking body measurements correctly, as I have said it earlier. And it is also the secret of good pattern, correct cutting, and they're so impressive. With this in mind, you surely have the confidence in creating your own fashion line. Okay? Yan. Alright. Now, ito po yung tips. Nababasa po ba? Yan. Tips in taking accurate measurement. Alright. Um, it's better for you to let your client wear a sleeveless, uh, tight-fitting or hugging dress para nakikita nyo yung Uh, form ng katawan. Kung di nang pansinin yung bilbil, yun talagang given na yan. No? Ang purpose lang is for you to be able to see the points to be measured. Okay? And then, use a tape measure that does not stretch. Huh? At maaari nga bago eh. Ano ko ba itong nadampot ko, hindi bago. Huh? Ito lang gamitin natin. Ang pinakabago kong tape measure. Mahaba ito. Magtuwa lang kasi ako eh. Kaya yan, gusto ko itong tape measure na ito. Huh? Yan. Okay. Before starting to get a measure, you have to uh, tawagin mo na si, ano, si si Mayan. Mag, mag, gawitin ko na lang yung actual na tao na pinisyan ko. Nahihiya daw siya, pero sabi ko wala ka siyang kahiya-hiya kasi I need actual measurement. Huh? You have to tie the waist first. Okay. Huh? Now, pag nagtali naman kayo ng inyong bewang, huwag yun na masikipan para lumit ang sukat. Dahil pag nagtahi ng damit at kayo sumikip, problema malaki. Yung enough lang na makakahinga kayo, huwag naman maluwag, huwag naman masikip. Why do we have to tie the waistline? No? Tying the waistline is very important because it is where you will end your measurements taken from the upper part to the waistline. And then from the waistline down to the lower part of the dress. Sino pinaka ang bewang at pinaka sentro ng ating figure. So do natin itatali ang ating do natin ilalagay ang tali sa waistline. At ang sikip, yung nakakaikot yung dalawang daliri, ha? Huh? Paikot niya. Pinatatawag ko na yung ating assistant. Okay. But do not use your tape measure to tie the waistline. Nako masisira ang tape measure. So you need to get a string. Oh. Oh, pwede na rin yung yung pinatatali sa mga diba sa sa pero kayo sa mga sa grocery, pwede na rin 'yon. Pero pinakamaganda yung string kasi maliit kang siya rito at pag pinuha mo yung measurement, eksakto ang or swak na swak ang uh, sukat. Okay. Oh, and then when you take the measurement lahat muna ng vertical unahin mo. So, what are these vertical measurements? Um, front figure, from the shoulder, passing the bus, down to the waistline. Oh, yung review, review. Okay? And then, the back figure, from the shoulder again, passing the bone here to the waistline. Those are the vertical. The sleeve length, from the shoulder tip, down to the desired sleeve. Or if it is three fourths or a long sleeve, those are the vertical. And what else? The skirt length. Now from the waistline down, those are vertical. So, tanggalin kita yung ano mo dyan yung 
Sabi ka na rito. Ito ay si May Ann, ang aking super duper na lalay. Okay. So, ito yung talit. Huh? Okay. Si May Ann. Oh, side view lang, side view. Side view, side view lang. Stand straight. Okay. okay. Ito po ang tali natin. Nakikita ba? Nakikita tayo. Delay? Delay talikas ba? Okay. Kakapainin nyo ang bewang, ha? Hindi mataas, hindi mababa. Saan talaga ang bewang niya? Okay? So, we tie the waistline. Kita ba yung pag-ano, pag-tali? Okay, okay na yan? Kaya na, hindi masikip, hindi maluwag. Ano niya mabewang mo? Sige. Hawa ko sa lita. Yan. Tatali yan. Okay? So, yan ang magiging guide ninyo. Okay. Pero huwag niyo kalimutan tanggalin ha pagkatapos magsukat. Baka naglalakad yan nakatali ang bewang. Okay. Ganyan ang nangyari sa mga sadyante. Lakad ang lakad, nakatali pa bewang. Okay. Alright. Yan ha. O, sige. Now. Alright. Then you record your measurement accuracy. Ha? So you have to get your... Alright. Yan. Next. Uunahin natin sukatan ang likod. Okay. Back muna, back. Because when we jump the pattern, we always start with the back pattern. So, para pag nagpa-pattern kayo, alam yung sunod-sunod yung yung sunod. Okay. This is... Dilig? Uh, ayan, nakikita na kami. Okay na ba ako? Kikita nyo? Uro na kami. Ayan. Okay. Side view. Alright. This is the back figure. You always request your client to stand straight, right? Stand straight. Then we start with the vertical measurements. Okay. Now, you have to write all the measurement first on your notebook. Okay? So we start with ah, uh, we start first with the vertical. A bit sa back we start with the vertical. So alin ang vertical measurements? Ay, hindi pala vertical. Ano ba yan? Horizontal. Pwede daw po mapakisum. Ano mga tips pwede natin measurement things? Ah, mamaya ang anak ko na bahala mag-zoom. Hindi ko alam eh. So, alam naman ako, mukha lang akong teki. Okay. So, we start first pala with the horizontal kasi itong back. Ano. So, we get the across back. Ay, across shoulder. Ay, yung number one measurement ko kasi doon nakalagay ay back figure. So, ang back figure is nakakuha ng vertical. Ano? Parang ka te? Yan. Ayan. Ayan. Yan. Okay. So, doon sa akin, sundan lang muna natin ang ating uh, measurements na sinulat ko kasi hindi ko siya na-arrange according to horizontal vertical. Naka number one nakalagay ay back figure. You know? Ang back figure ay taken from the shoulder seam. This is the shoulder seam. Yan ha? At the base of the neck, ito yung neck, ito yung shoulder, ito yung base. Yan. Down to the waist, passing the back bone. Kapainin yung likod na yung client, meron yung buto-buto dyan. Huh? So, from the base of the neck, yan, passing the back bone, up to the waist line kung saan nakalagay ang inyong sinulid. So, ang sukat niya ay 17 ang likod niya. So, from the base of the neck, passing the backbone to the waistline. Ang kanyang sukat dito ay 18 and 1 half. Is that straight na ito? Right? Oh. So, ibig sabihin, 18 and 1 half ang kanyang back figure. Okay. Huh? So, medyo mahaba-habang back niya. Okay? Now, as you go along in the pattern making, mapapansin niyo minsan, bakit mas mahabang likod sa harap? So, recheck the measurement. Baka mama hindi lang nakaupo tayo na maayos or maari ang ang ito kanyang tali ay mababa or need adjustment. You know? So, from the base of the neck, down, passing the backbone, down to the waistline, yan ay 18, ay hindi pa na, kasi naman, tinanggal lang sa labing ni ma'am eh. So, si ma'am talaga o. Oh. Kukunyari pa. Okay. So, 
Ayan, 17. So, isulat natin 17. Kasi itong gagawa natin ng pattern after na ating lecture, lecture. So, ang ating back figure ay 17. Now, ang across shoulder ay from this point no, to this point. This point here to this point. Kung baga sa manika, yung pinagdudugtungan ng kamay sa kanong braso, yun ang pinaka shoulder seam. Ha? Minsan naman, meron talaga shoulder na bagsak. Adjust nyo lang yung later kasi minsan ang chest naman ay malalim. So, from here, shoulder seam, ayan, from the shoulder seam, dadaan dito sa buto sa liig. No? Ayan. Dadaan dyan. Okay? Sabi ko sa aking assistant, mag-sleeveless. Nahihiyaraw siya mag-sleeveless. Ayan, ayan, na ganun na lang. Oh. From the shoulder seam, passing the backbone. Kapay nyo yung mga liig, meron dyang buto. Dadaan dyan ang inyong tape measure. Hanggang sa kabilang shoulder. So, shoulder niya rito ay 15 and a half. Okay? 15 and a half. Isulat lang natin. Kasi pag nagawa siya ng pattern, itong gagamitin natin pattern. Tingnan natin kung sexy siya ha. Okay. Then, across back. Ang across back ay ito yung kili-kili. No? Yung huwag yun ay pasok sa loob. Dito na sa labas. Okay? From the armpit to the other armpit. Okay? So, 16. Ang across shoulder niya ay 15 and a half. Okay. Ang kanyang across back ay ito, 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 ito. 15. Alright? 15. Sometimes, the cross shoulder and the cross back differs by one, e one half inch. Pero, may figure talaga na mahabang shoulder, malalim ang across back, you have to make some adjustment. Kasi pangit naman yung arm hole na gumaganun. No? Okay. Then you have the front length. Okay. So sa back, we have the back figure, we have the across shoulder, and we have the across back. Okay na tayo dyan? Okay. So haharap na ang inyong client. Dahan-dahan lang pong paikot, no? And if possible, may space na ikaw ang umiikot, hindi yung client. Mahihilo po ang client ninyo. Huh? Dapat, ang nagsusukat ang umiikot. Okay? Hindi yung client ang papaikot-ikot yan ka rin. <laughs> hindi na kayo babalikan ng client niyo pag nahihilo sa inyo. Okay? Next, we have the front length. Alright, ayan. Stand straight, Mrs. Okay. Front length is from the base. Ayan. From the shoulder seam at the base of the neck. No? Remember, this is a shoulder seam. Mayroong shoulder seam at the base of the neck. May shoulder seam naman at kung sa may uh, edge ng sleeve seam. Okay? So, front length. Kung saan mo kinuha yung back length, the points doon din ang front length. Ayan. Passing the bus. At huwag mong pisain, ha? Relax lang. Relax hanggang doon sa waistline. Okay? So, this should be relaxed up to the waistline. So, ang kanyang waistline, ang front figure ay 16. Now, para hindi na kayo paulit-ulit, kunin na ninyo ang bust height. No? Kasi nakaganyan na eh. So, ang bust height niya ay 10 or 11. No? So, 16 ang front figure, ang bust height ay 11. Eh, ipabaliktad ba? Ang tatangin sa pa. Ipabaliktad yata. Yan. From the base of the neck, down to the bust height, to the waistline. So, 11, 16, ha? Huwag di din, ha? Huwag di din. Masisira ang form ng yung pattern. So, 11, yan, 16. Okay. So, bust height ay 11. Ay, wala pa pala yung bust height. Ito yung nandang wala pa isang lang. 11, at ang front length ay 16. Okay. So, actually, nakuha natin dalawang vertical na measurement. Next is the across chest. Opposite ng across back ay across chest. So, dito, sa ibabaw lang din, hanggang sa kabila. No, huwag ipapasok sa loob. Ibabaw lang. Yan. So, ang kanyang across chest ay 13. Kunin na rin ninyo ang bus distance. Yan. Bus point to bus point ang bus distance. 7. So, dito ay 13. Ang bus distance ay 7. Pakisulat po Kaya ko kung muna na sulat dito. Sulat ko muna ha, kasi pag pattern tayo, ito ang gagamitin natin. Bus distance ay 7, ang bus front length ay 16, ang uh, process ay 13, 
Okay. Huh? So, next ay bust line. Ayan. Alalahanin ninyo na ang figure ng tao, hindi pare-pareho. Mayroong figure na malalaki yung dito sa likod. Huh? Now, pag makita nyo malaki ang likod, mas syempre, matambok. Yun yung pagalitan na mag-dive. Kasi hindi na kasalanan yun. Okay? So, you, when you make, if you take the body measurement or the bust line, kailangan parallel yan sa floor. Isasama nyo yung tambok sa likod at yung bust. At mag-iipit lang dalawang daliri. Na? na enough para umiikot ang iyong tape measure. Huwag yung pababayaan na dito sa likod nakalaylay na gano'n. Kita nyo nakalaylay? Nakita nyo ba nakalaylay? Ano? Dapat hindi siya nakalaylay. Nakita nyo? Ano yun ba? Pwede nakita ba na nakalaylay ito? Hindi halata. Ay, hindi ang tulong na kasi. Importante ito kasi, e, minsan may malalaki yung dito sa likod. Kailangan kasama yan pag sinukatan nyo lang bust line. Kaya e, ganyan. Dapat parallel, no? Tapos dalawang daliri, at tingnan ninyo po umiikot na maayos. Okay? Hindi rin magandang paluluwagan ng ganun kasi when we do our pattern, we will add a room for um, movement. So, kailangan eksakto mo na sukat. Dalawang daliri lang ang maikit dyan na pwede siyang umikot-ikot. At isasama kung mayroong matambok dito sa likod. Huh? Okay. Yan. At umiikot. So, ang sukat niya ay 36, ay 39 and 1 fourth. So, kahit 1 fourth isusulat ninyo. Dahil importante sa measurement yan. 39 and 1 fourth. Okay. Importante po yan dahil ang 1 fourth, pag ginawa mong apat, that is 1 inch. Okay. Ito ba sinod natin? Kita ba? Napitsura na lang mamaya. Kasi magpipicture na lang dumamaya ni Anakis para makita nyo yung ano. Alright. Then we have the bus distance. Okay. Bus distance is bus tip to bus tip. No? Okay. Yan. So, seven. Now, if possible, you ask your client to wear the best bra. Huh? Para pag nang galimbawa nag gawa ka ng pattern, yung best bra niya. At pag nang fee-fitting, Kung anong sinuot niyang bra, yun din dapat ang suit niya to fitting. Kasi yun ang kinuha na mo ng measurement. Alright. And then, the bust height. Okay, nakuha ko na yung bust height. Ang bust height niya ay 7. 7. Ang waist na waist. Okay. Ito ngayon ang bewang. Huh? So, sa bewang, just like the... Yeah. Mag-iipit ka lang din ang dalawang daliri, ha? Para makakaipot yung tape measure. Huwag niyo namang sikipan para maging sexy. Eh, hindi na mga makakahinga yung kliyente niyo. Yung inak lang, room lang, na hindi siya mahirap po humiya. So, kanyang bewang ay 35. Okay lang 35? Okay. 35. Pag may 1 ilagay niyo yung 1 -fourth. Pag yung dayain. Then we have the armhole or the arm side. No? Armhole or arm side. Ito yan. Papaikot mo dito sa yan. Again, dalawang daliri dapat at siklit na tumiikot. No? So this is your yan. Yan yan. Okay? So kung gusto pa niya na medyo maluwag-luwag, Palaki nyo lang ng konti. Pero huwag naman yung iba kasabi niya, ibang kasi gusto ko malaking sleeve. That will come into your pattern designing. We are just making the basic pattern. Huh? From the basic pattern, you can create different designs. Doon mo nalaki ng lieg, doon mo nalaki ng ang armhole, pag doon ka na sa pattern designing. Okay? But for pattern making as your basic pattern, kailangan eksakto lang na mga sukat. Okay? So, ang kanyang armhole ay 18. Okay. And then, the sleeve length from the base of the, or from the seam, seam line. No? Sa edge lang yung seam line. Ayan. Ito siya. Imagine na lang yung 
yung pinapandugtungan ng malita, yan. Yan ang pinaka start na inyong sleeve length. To the desired length of the client, kung 3 fourths naman, bend mo ng konti, papunta ka rito, yan ang ganyan, ang 3 fourths, o kung long sleeve, ang ganyan dito. Ha? Kailangan bebend na ng konti. Kasi kung hindi, hindi yung, yung long sleeve, hindi yun. Okay? Yan. For short sleeve, 6 or 7, and then for 3 fourths, dito, yan. kaya in between niya, pwede. And then for the long sleeve. Okay? Then you get your armhole. Ah, no, sorry. The girth. Ito yung luwag ng braso. So ask your client kung saan siya komportable. So, sa girth. At kung 3 fourths naman, kukuhanin nyo rin dito. So kanyang komportable yung luwag. At kung namang long sleeve, kukunin nyo yung waist. Nakikita? Okay. Okay. Pagkatapos yung, okay, we are done with the sleeve length, we are done with the girth. And then we have the, ayan, tapos na rin tayo sa wrist. Okay. Sunod natin yung hips, no? Kung nga, rin na sa tali mo. Wala na yung tali. Yung tali na lang, wala yung, naputol si tali. Balik natin kasi, pabalik natin kasi gagamitin pa natin sa skirt length at saka sa pants length. Okay. Ah! Sa tali natin. Ayan. 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 Okay. Ah. So we need to get the waist measure. Tapos na sa waist. Wala pa. Okay. Waist measure. Again, kunin mo yung bewang niya kung saan relax. Okay. Paikutin din ha. Yan. So ang bewang ay 35. Okay. Okay. Ayan, 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 isasama rin ang bilbil. Kasi kung hindi, sisikip ang pagda niya. Yan. Kung saan ang bilbil, ahabulin, tapos paikot, and then, i-check din nyo ngayon kung tataas, bababa ang inyong tape measure. Pag tumaas, bumaba ang tape measure, ibig sabihin, comfortable ang cliente niyo sa kanyang hips measure. Now, kung hindi siya tataas, hindi siya bababa, ibig sabihin, masikip ang kuha niyo. So, you have to check sa hips measure. No? Isasama kung may bilbil. Huwag niyo itago si bilbil. Okay? At kung may kwet. Okay? Yan. So, binikot na. So, ang kanyang hips ay 42. Wow, sexy. 42. Okay? And then, pag kinuha niya yung skirt length, kita pa ba kami yung skirt length? Pa ba ba? From the waist, down to the desired length of the skirt. Ang skirt ay mayroong mini skirt, may knee length, may mid cuff, at mayroong long skirt. So, kung ang client ninyo ay pabalik-balik sa inyo, sasabihin, kunin mo na lahat ang sukat, ay di mas maganda. Sabi niyo, client ninyo ay buhay kayo, pabalik-balik sa inyo. Okay? So, from the waist, kunin na rin ninyo yung hip length. Yung pinakamaumbok na parte ng puwet, yun ang hip length. Kung kunin niyo yun, okay, ito sa kanya ay nasa 8. Tapos, ang haba ng palda na gusto niya, kung ni o gana kayo ang gusto niya, and then kung long skirt. Okay? Ginagamit din natin ito from here to get the pants length. So, from the waistline down to the uh, dito sa may bottom. Huh? Sa may buto. Okay? Tama ba yan? Patutuwing ko na lang itong aking model. Okay? So, ano ba? 
Alin, alin, alin. Alin, alin ang di makita. Ah, okay. Basta siya dito ito. Dito. Ayan. Bukle ito tayo sa prop. Hindi ito lang ito. Oh, ayun na yun. Buti na lang yung aking mukuha. Pag gardening, nandito sa tabi ko. Ayan. Tungtong ka dyan. Ayan. Kita na? So, from the waist. Ayan, waistline. Pas mo ka man dito. Hip length, yung pinakaumbok na parte ha, yung pinakamatambok. The buttocks, we call it as buttocks. Teachers, tawag dyan buttocks. Okay? Buttocks, so eight. And then the desired length of the skirt, kung anong gusto niya. And then down, hanggang dito sa may uh, ankle, pwede na dyan sa pants length. Okay? So you take many measurements by just one step. Okay? Okay? Ayan, pakita ko ulit. From the waist to the buttocks, then to the desired length of the skirt, one haba, and down here for the pants length or for the long skirt. Okay? Next. Right. Now, ang additional na lang pala yung pants length, okay na. So, taas ka, taas ka pa. The additional point for measure pa yung thigh. Ito yung ating natawag na thigh. Yan. Ang hita, huwag yung sakalin, kung tinan niya pa nung pinakomportable niya maluwag. This is the thigh measure. And then, of course, we get the knee. Sometimes, we need the knee in the pattern. And then, we have the bottom. Kung anong desired width na gusto ng client. Okay? And then, ito na kasi naman sa akin. And then, the crash, as I was saying a while ago, we use the L-square. Oh. Oh. Swerte, naka-shorts ang aking client. So, use the L-square, ganito. Huh? Just relax the L-square dun sa kanyang pantalon. Huwag yung atakin pa taas, ha? Okay, relax lang, relax. And then, from here, at dito sa kanyang waistline, ito mataas ang waistline kasi ito, so hanggang dito ang sukat niya. So, ang ating crutch ay 12. From here, ang sukat, ha? From here, hanggang doon, ang crutch niya ay 12. Okay? Yan ang mga sikreto dyan sa paggawa ng pantalon. Rene, hi! Kung nanonood ka, ito na yung L-square ginagamit natin for taking the pants. Okay? Any more question? So, yun ang tamang pagkuha ng body measurements. Okay? So, practice, practice lang pag may time. So, for those who are really interested to master sewing and to or refresh your skills in sewing lalong lalo na iba sabi nila hirap na hirap ako sa pagpapattern making this is the time for you to start practicing again your skills in pattern making mas masarap ang ikaw ang nagtatabas at ikaw ang nagtatahe then later if you develop the skills you can use this as your business so what I am teaching you is not only for your own consumption but also to be a business in the future. Or if not, you teach other people who are also interested in the business. At i-ano natin, kumbaga, ito yung networking natin, no? We transfer the skills to as many as interested people. Okay? So, for the next episode, we will be starting to draft the basic pattern and we will start with the front and back. And our, our first um, project will be my favorite sleeping garment muna. Para ma-feel nyo lang yung ang sarap na may nabuo na kayong gumawa. Okay? So, questions, just uh, message me and I will try my best to answer. And on Friday, I'll see you for drafting the basic pattern. So be ready with, for your assignment, be ready with your L-square, your tape measure, your pattern paper, of course. Kung walang pattern paper, walang problema, yung mga likod ng jar yun, ah, jar yun, nagkalindarin yung puti. Gamitin nyo yan para at least hindi na kayo mga problema. No? And then your pencil and eraser, of course. Um, what else? Tape measure and your French curve. Kung meron kayong French curve, ito. So, this is your French curve, no? Alam ko, meron kayo niyan. Ngayon, yung mga L-square na hindi nyo kinuha sa square line, ewan ko nasaan na. 
Kadapunta niyo, bahala na si Batman. You just get a new one. Okay, ba, mga pangit ka rin naman yung mga elsewhere na dati na. Okay, this is your French curve. We use this for the neckline and for the armhole. What else? Uh, Doon din sa crotch ng pants niyo, we'll be using this. Okay? So, hip curve for your skirt. Ito po, ang hip curve for the skirt. And then, for your, ako, itong gustong gusto kong gamitin na ruler when drafting the pattern ng kahoy, kesa doon sa mga plastic bagay, may metal, pero mas, mas comfortable ako sa kahoy and then of course, your tape measure and then, practice getting body measurements, kahit limang tao lang, no? para, para ma-master nyo lang yung how to take the body measurements accurately kahit limang tao, tapos yung limang tao yun pra-practice din natin gawan ng basic pattern and after we are done with the basic pattern, front, back, sleeve, and skirt, huli natin yung pants. And then we, I will teach you how to design, how to transfer darts to different position. Kasi hindi naman maganda yung isa lang design ninyo, no? Para naman maiba-iba. And then, yun ang, yun ang pinakamasarap kong parte yung slash and spread method, at saka yung pivot method na nagkakaguli mo si John to the John. Pero it's, it's worth learning all those skills. And then designing different types of skirt, designing the sleeve, designing the front and back, of course. We will be doing that series by series. So for now, my dear students, um, I will end up with, of course, again, saying thank you to each and everyone for listening, for watching. And I hope I have given you something. Though this is not a new one, but this is a refreshing uh, point, especially for my students who are now teachers handling dressmaking class and I hope you learned something okay so we end our day with a prayer in the name of the Father of the Son of the Holy Spirit Amen thank you Lord for the wonderful day thank you Lord for allowing me to reach out to my students or my friends and I hope that what you have given me I have been able to share with them allow me Lord to keep on doing this until my dying days so that when I go, I will leave something behind for all my students. Thank you, Lord. Please keep them, bless them, and give their heart desires also, Lord. Keep them safe always and allow us to interact with each other, allow us to learn from each other. And again, Lord, thank you very, very much for the people behind this endeavor, especially to my mommy dearest. Without her, I will not be doing this. For all my siblings, thank you for um, believing in me. And for all my students, thank you for remembering what I have taught. Thank you very, very much, Lord, for all the people that have sent to me. All this, Lord, I ask in your mighty name and I offer them back to you. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Goodbye. See you again on Friday. We start with the basic pattern or the back and front pattern. See you!